looking back, it happened so quickly. One minute, I was making the decision to stop eating. The next minute, I was now being told I had eight weeks left to live. I had an amazing family who loved me so much and told me that I could be whatever I wanted to be. But I was bullied at school and life was tough for several years. I felt quite lonely, I felt isolated. There was just lots of questions. I was really confused about who was I meant to be. It felt like I always had to be somebody that I wasn't. I then lost two people who were really close to me. I felt like I had no control over what was happening. And that feeling of loneliness and isolation just got deeper and deeper. And I was left feeling worthless, that I was unlovable, and that was this gonna be what happened for the rest of my life? So at the age of 15, I made a decision to take control of something in my life. Within the space of a few months, I'd gone from making a decision to stop eating to my hair falling out, having constant headaches, not being able to concentrate. I had brown patches all over my skin and it surprised me how quickly it happened. Like I remember lying in bed at night, my skin would hurt because it was stretching so much because there was so little of me left. I felt trapped. I felt scared. This thing that I started off in control of had taken control of me. And I ended up telling my mum everything. I was fed up of living this constant lie and I knew that I needed help. The next day, my parents dragged me to the doctors and the doctor started to tell me about how I'd knocked years off my lifespan, how my chances of having children would drastically decrease and said, Shell, if you don't start eating again, I'm gonna give you eight weeks to live. And she asked me to draw a picture of how I viewed myself. I remember drawing this picture of a normal girl. It was at that point that I was told I had a mental health issue. It was diagnosed as anorexia. It was a constant battle to get better. I was seeing doctors, counsellors, dietitians, and I just didn't feel like anybody really understood me and what I was feeling. I just felt like I was at the bottom of this deep pit and there was no way of getting out. There was a youth worker in my school called Steve. He started to tell me about this verse in the Bible about Jesus wanting to be my friend and share a meal with me. And I was thinking, how inconsiderate. I'm here struggling with this eating disorder and you're telling me that Jesus loves me and wants to share a meal with me. And the bell went and I had to go to my next lesson, but I was so cross and so angry and so caught up with the things that he'd said but I also couldn't stop thinking about it. Steve invited me to go to his band practice at the local church. And I met his other two friends, John and Tim. And through listening to them and just being in church, it started to change my perceptions of God and church and Christians. And it led to a really significant moment I sat on the end of my bed and I just said, God, if you love me as much as all of these people are saying you love me, you need to come into my life and do something about this mess that I'm in because I can't do it on my own. And this warmth just started to rise up in me. I knew that I was loved, that I was accepted, that I was worth something. Everything that felt dead in my life started to feel like it was alive again. But the reality was, I still had an eating disorder. There was days where I felt like I could do it and I could get through it. And there were days where I just thought, this is never, ever gonna happen. It took two years for me to get to the point where I was totally free. 
And that's because of God and the hope and the love that he's given to me. I was a girl who'd been told I'll always have an eating disorder and now I haven't got an eating disorder. I was told, oh, your chances of having children are really slim and I've now got four amazing little boys. So no matter what you're dealing with at the moment, whatever it is that you're struggling with, whatever it is that you've done to yourself, that's been done to you, there is hope. You are loved, you are worth something. Jesus can take the most broken, bruised, frail life and turn it into something that is so beautiful and so wonderful. And the reason I know that is because he's done that with me. I'm living proof that there is hope and you can be free from whatever it is that is holding you back from being everything that God has made you to be. Just ask God and he will, he'll help you.